Hey, what is up, everybody? Ruben Knight here. My name's Ruben, and welcome back to the best Space Engineers creations. Now, no, that creation, that lunchton looking thing that looks like it's been kitted out to the absolute teeth, is not a creation that we are going to have a look at today. That was basically just something that I was fucking around with and just placed it in the center over there. I wanted to see if I had a simple block with a shitload of armor and warp drives inside, <laughs> what I could do with it. But that's not the point. The reason I've got that there is just for a filler while I quickly have a quick chat with you guys. Now, at the moment, in the past with all these Space Engineers video, I have been doing three videos and having a look at three creations each video. Now, it does become a little bit of a lengthy process when it comes to editing and when it comes to uploading. Unfortunately, based in South Africa, we've got shit internet. So the bigger the video, the longer it takes to upload. But that is not a problem of yours. That is a problem of mine. But the way I'm going to go around this is we are going to make these series a little bit shorter. But the nice thing is about making the series a little bit shorter means that I can do videos on it a lot more frequently. That way we'd be able to have a look at a lot more creations. So that is the idea that I had for today. So normally now where we were looking at about, um, I think it was three um, creations each um, episode we're now either going to do one or two depending on the size of the creation that we are having a look at for today specifically we are going to be having a look at two creations now obviously this is not one of them so i'm going to go ahead and delete that so the first one we are going to be having a look at today is the Helios Solar Ray. Some of you might have seen it on the Steam Workshop. It's rated very, very well and it's got a very, very real world application. One of the biggest problems is oxygen. In the game itself, if you're playing with oxygen, oxygen is not that easy to come by. Unless you're on a planet that has got ice, or you've got a lot of asteroids around you that have got ice deposits on them, oxygen is a very, very difficult thing to come across. Unless you go ahead and do what Hijal, now that is the creator of this um, creation basically, unless you go ahead and you do what he has done. He's created the Helios Solo Array. Now in short, that's the Helios Solo Array. <laughs> it is a absolutely massive and when i mean massive i really do mean fucking huge creation of basically just collecting oxygen that's what it's out here to do there are two ways that you can gather oxygen in the game one is through the ice where you obviously extract the oxygen from the water and you obviously pump it throughout the base or throughout your ship providing oxygen for you to breathe the other way is through a photosynthesis process now that is with these green rooms or these green bays basically those tiny little things over there each one of those will obviously collect over a certain period of time. Now, they collect very slowly. So, this is not going to be your main supply. But, I mean, if this thing is full up and you come out here, you collect the oxygen, you put it into oxygen storage tanks, and you take it back to wherever your base is, it could serve a really big world function. Now, the nice thing is because of the design of this, one of the nice things I like is you can place this pretty damn far away from your, um, from your own base. One of the things is a creation like this will kill your frame rate if you've got a whole bunch of other stuff um, by it as well. So you could set coordinates over here, jump to and from using the war drives, get the oxygen, leave, go back to your base, dump all the oxygen inside your base, inside the um, oxygen containers over there. And obviously then serve a purpose. But to give you guys an idea, I'm going to go up close to this just to give you an idea of absolutely how huge this thing is. Now keep in mind, these are one of the photosynthesis panels over here. Okay? I'm just going to go into third person quickly so that I can show you. That is me compared to one of those things. Just one of them. It's bigger than what I am. And then obviously if we zoom out, you could see the pure scale of it. And go up to one of the solar panels and you compare my size, the size of myself to the solar panel. Like, it is difficult to truly understand the size of it. I mean, it is freaking massive. Just to give you an idea, we have got two, four, six, eight. Eight on each row, so that's eight, that's 16. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's nine of them. There are nine sections, each with 16 um, of those green room things if you want to call them that there was nine of those um sections if you want to call it that and each one has got a connector onto it so you can simply just connect up to it and obviously pull all the oxygen into the ship or whatever you've brought along to obviously take that back to your base or towards your station or whatever it might be I mean, it is truly massive. I mean, I think I would easily, very easily be able to fit a seriously big destroyer through the center of that. 
it's got a very real world application it could possibly be very expensive to make in the process as well but i mean it is so worth it i mean we go through here i mean the scale of this gets lost on you especially if you're sitting like this on the outside and you're having a look at this entire creation you look down at it i mean it looks tiny because there's nothing really to compare it to but i mean once you go into third person you start getting close and you start flying past these solar panels you start getting a true idea of how fucking massive this thing is i don't want to know how long it would take you to pull this in a real world situation but you can I mean, it is gorgeous, and I mean, the real-world application of it, the survival readiness of it, it could serve a massive purpose, obviously going towards creating yourself um, oxygen, making sure you've always got oxygen. Ow, and I just bumped into it. So, very, very nice. I just wanted to have a look at this. It was something very unique. It's not a station, it's not a ship, but it's something that is gorgeous. I mean, if we sit down like this, it almost looks like one big toilet bowl. Turn off my jetpack. There we go. <laughs> just pretend like we're standing over there. This thing is huge and i'm really really impressed for what the, the, the creator has gone for basically an ulterior source alternative source to ice for oxygen because this oh and i'm make my boots have gone on so now i can actually run around on this that gives you a better understanding of how big this freaking creation is but one thing the nice thing one thing i like about it is this is relying on a source that is not going to be running out and that's the sun <laughs> So you're going to get a shitload of oxygen from it. And obviously with the size of this creation and with the amount of solar panels that you've got on here and these photosynthesis, um, actually, let's, what is the real name for this damn thing? Because if I have to keep it, if I have to keep calling it whatever the hell I have, it's an oxygen farm. Let's refer to it as an oxygen farm. With the amount of oxygen farms on this, with all the solar panels, with all the storage containers, obviously, for that oxygen, you are going to get a massive amount of oxygen from a solo array such as this and if your computer can handle it like i remember in the very first episode i told you guys there's two limits to this game one is your pc two is your imagination but if you've got the pc to handle it you could possibly dump in two of these outside quite a distance outside of the render field of where your base is have these two working over time pumping in all that oxygen that way it is one less thing you have to worry about so I'm really impressed with it. I really do like it. And it's something I would even consider using. I don't think I'd quite go this big. I'd possibly look at designing my own one, possibly quite a bit smaller. But something this big is something that is obviously really, really going to work. And I still can't get over the fact of how absolutely freaking huge this creation is. But yeah, that is the Helios Solar Ray. Once again, this was by Hijal. A link for this creation will be in the description below. So you guys can go download it yourselves and actually just try it out and see how well it works in a real-world application. Now, to give you an idea, sorry, I missed this out when I was actually having a look. These are the amount of um, oxygen storage containers he's got here. He's got three stacked. So it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So these 24 oxygen storage tanks within one module and remember there are nine modules so that is a shitload of oxygen you are going to get the link for this the creation will be in the description go try it out yourself see if you can actually use this in a real world application if it's not retardedly expensive to make in regards to resources and components that you will need but i think if given the time if given the patience and if the grind is real with you you'd be able to use this and truly benefit from it so the next creation that we are going to be having a look at is the GSI Encore Class Assault Corvette. Now this is created by Extivius V. I hope I pronounced that right and I didn't absolutely butcher your name. If I did, I do apologize. The link for the creation will be in the description below. So maybe you guys can pronounce the name a little bit better than I did. But what I like about this is it is an assault Corvette. So basically it is a assault frigate. It is something that you can jump into, get into a battle with and hopefully end up victorious. Um, what I also like about it, once again, no mods. Fully vanilla, no mods are necessary whatsoever, and it's a absolutely beautiful creation, as you can clearly see for yourself. I mean, it is gorgeous. No matter what angle you look at it from, it is stunning. It is not the biggest ship we've had a look at, not by a long shot, but it will do exactly what it needs to. I mean, you can already tell, it is kitted to the teeth. We have got two rocket pods on the side, um, well, directly on the side of the ship, we have got one, two, two rocket um, pods also on the side, but more mounted on top really than the side. On the side as well, we've got a sort of a small little Gatling gun, 
and we've got another Gatling gun over here facing backwards. And obviously it's mirrored right to left. We've also got one or two interior turrets over here that will obviously also serve a purpose in case something gets a little too close and just for a little bit more firepower. And we've also got a little interior turret over here. So it is going to pack a serious punch. This is not the cruiser that you want to come along or the Corvette that you want to come across. And you definitely don't want to be hostile if you do come across it. Now at the bottom, it doesn't end. We have got... A couple of interior turrets mounted over here as well. It will also serve a purpose of um, defending the ship. The only difference between the interior turret and the exterior turret is the interior turret's range is not as far as the exterior turrets, the Gatling turrets. But they will still do a shit lot of damage should you be on the receiving end of them. Underneath this winglet, basically, we have got some more interior turrets. They will also serve a purpose of defending the ship. And if we drop down below over here, we can actually see we have got a... Uh, sorry, that's a wilder. My bad. We've got this turret over here and then obviously on the winglet on the other side as well. We've got a decent landing gear set up over here. So this thing is capable of landing in atmosphere, I do believe. I mean, it is gorgeous. No matter what angle you look at this from, it is absolutely stunning. And once again, making use of blocks that were not intended to be used. That way. I mean, look at this. This is a staircase over here with a catwalk basically mounted inside there so using blocks not as they were intended to and coming up with a design like this what i also like is once again making use of those unfinished blocks just to give it that overall look now that's making use of the blast doors that are unfinished to give it that that structural look and i really really like it it's something i've never thought of doing myself and we saw it in a couple of creations that we've had a look at in the past and i mean it was absolutely beautiful the thrusters are nicely hidden so it's not going to be an easy target we have got a welder over there, and I don't actually think that serves a purpose, or it might actually, I mean, it might actually serve a purpose. Because these turrets are mounted so close to those welders, if these turrets ever get damaged, it could quite simply be a case of turn on the welders, and those welders will repair these turrets. That way you never actually have to come out here yourself with the components to be able to repair it. And that, that if, if that is piped up correctly, it'll just be piped up into your main storage container, which will have all the components, and as soon as you turn it on, it will fix anything that is within a certain vicinity around it. Very, very clever. Never thought of you making use of something like that. We've got two connection points here right by the entrance into the ship. Obviously, this is where you can connect up, dump off a couple of things you don't need. Very easy for something like a small or mining ship or small or transport ship. Very, very simple. And there's more than one connection. We've got another connector point down there. Now, we do have an entrance into a hangar bay over here. And I do see that there, two, there are two interior turrets mounted right above the door. So, obviously, if you are not supposed to be coming down here and you somehow made it past the Gatling turrets on top, as well as the rocket pods on top, these two interior turrets are going to nail you, depending on how they have been set up. Making use of the armor blocks very, very nicely to give it that that overall silhouette that just looks absolutely stunning the only thing i possibly don't agree with is this this is one of the oxygen um, storage containers now it is mounted on the outside it looks aesthetically appealing however that is a very good target i mean if that is a full oxygen container and these oxygen storage tanks can hold a shitload of oxygen if that thing gets destroyed during the heat of the battle something's able to find its way around the back and destroy that that's a lot of oxygen that you have lost but it goes towards the overall aesthetic appeal so let's have a look from the back. So obviously, thrust-wise, yeah, we've got quite a bit. <laughs> we've got these two massive modules, and I love the way he's designed it. The way the creator has basically formed these pods, if you want to call it that, with lighting on the inside to give it that ambiance <laughs> for the thrusters, for the two main thrusters on the inside. We've obviously got the smaller thrusters on the center over there, as well as three thrusters on the side over here. The biggest thing that I really like is how well those thrusters have been enclosed. One of the biggest problems you have when you're getting into a fight is losing thrust, and you can't either slow down or speed up again or get yourself out of the situation because your opponent was clever enough to take out your maneuverability, get rid of all of that, so you're basically a sitting duck because you're not going to be getting into a fight from a long distance. You're going to be wanting to jump into a um, battle zone, do the damage and jump back out. But jumping out does require quite a bit of time for those cells to recharge. So you need to make sure that you can at least move around, get into the fight, have that maneuverability to basically not only defend yourself, but also cause a lot of damage to your opponent. 
so that when those cells are ready to jump out of there, you can at least leave in one piece. So I like, I really, really like how the um, creator has encased his thrusters. Very, very clever, and that's a big oversight that a lot of people have when they have a look at their thrusters. Now, if we have a look at the top over here, obviously, we have got the thrusters pointing upwards. Obviously, we need forwards, backwards, right and left, up and down movement as we are in space. And obviously, with there being nothing acting upon the ship when we're in space, no friction, no gravity, no nothing. If we're going in one direction and there's nothing there to slow it down, it'll just keep going. So obviously, these thrusters work as dampening as well. Now, I like what he's done over here. He's made use of the armor blocks. Um, the sorry the blast door blocks and then put the pillars on the side of it with a light on the top just to give it that antenna feel that antenna look and then he has actually placed an antenna over here so that you can find the ship from i think it's a maximum of fifty thousand or five thousand meters i think it's fifty thousand meters so 50 kilometers is where you can see this um, ship from if the antenna's output is 100 percent and the broadcasting signal is on will you be able to see the ship from up to 50 kilometers away which is absolutely <laughs> ridiculously far and then once again also over here the turrets aren't oh sorry not the turrets the thrusters aren't that encased but they're encased to the point where you are not going to get them from the back you are not going to get them from the side you'd have to be coming straight down in order for those to become a relevant target but at that point i mean look at all the amount of turrets that you've got facing at you you've got the two gatlings over here you've got the rocket pods mounted on the front there you are not going to be getting at the ship very easily that is for damn sure <laughs> Then just making use of the armor blocks, laying it in such a fashion that it makes this very unique pattern, this almost layered effect over here. I like the way the ship looks overall. This, however, I don't think actually serves a purpose other than aesthetic appeal because obviously having a vent over here, pump oxygen into space. Uh, this ship, I think a billion of these ships is not going to have enough to pump enough space into oxygen for us to breathe. Uh, enough oxygen into space for us to breathe. <laughs> So yeah, I think that is quite simply just there for aesthetic appeal, but it does serve a purpose. I mean, it looks nice. This ship from front to back looks absolutely stunning. I'm not going to have a look at the sides over here because obviously we have already done that on the other side. I did mention that it is mirrored right to left. But we can have a look over here. We've got some more thrusters hidden very, very nicely in there. And if I'm not mistaken, I do think these are the heavy armor blocks. So you are not getting through these blocks very, very easily. It's going to take quite a bit of shooting to get through them. But once again, it's created this open section over here. So if a rocket directly hits this impact or does start breaching through, it first needs to go through another layer of armor before it actually gets to the vital inner workings of the ship. But once again, the thrust is hidden very nicely over there so that it's not such an easy target. And then making use once again of blocks that are not supposed to be used in that way, but used very nicely to add to the overall design of the ship. So once again, that's just the entrance into the ship. We've got obviously the thrusters again facing to the side. And if we actually drop it down a little bit, you can actually see there are the other thrusters. Now, these are the directional thrusters that I was referring to, obviously pushing us in the direction that we do want to go. Now, I do think on this side, we might have a better view due to the sun. Nope, not really. So we'll just turn our lights on. So once again, using a wheel, no real purpose, but it's there for aesthetic appeal. Using a, set, a staircase and catwalks placed upside down along with a big warning sign stating that when these things are on and this thing is moving, that's going to be hot. The blue stuff coming out of there is not something you want to want to take to your face. It's going to be hot. <laughs> so it's basically told you, just be careful. It should get hot. Uh, just mind yourself. Okay, so we've obviously got the landing gear over here. So if this thing lands, obviously it will be very, very nice to witness landing this thing. And then obviously the thrusters underneath to be able to slow it down should you be moving downwards or should you be um, entering the atmosphere of a planet. You can obviously face the belly of the ship down, more surface area, the thrusters facing down, slowing your descent so you can uh, put her down gently. We've got a welder underneath there. Again, now I do think that is simply a case of once again, if something does end up breaking or not. I actually think that's a projector block. I think that might actually be a projector block. Maybe, for example, project out a small torpedo over here, drop it onto the planet, drop it onto a ship. I mean, the possibilities are absolutely endless. So having a look under the ship, we go to the front, and there's not much to look at. Obviously, just the landing gear once again. And then underneath over here, once again, making use of those blast doors and those pillars with the lights on it to give it that antenna feel without it actually being an antenna. Now, in here... 
that is definitely a projector block and we've got these welders over here this i can only imagine could possibly be like a torpedo or something that you could project into this open space over here if you've got the blueprint for it you project it over here the welders do the job they um, weld it up and this will either shoot it forward if you've got um, propellants on there or it will simply drop it if it's in the influence of gravity which would be very very nice and then obviously the split look in front now the reason why i zoomed out this way is because i wanted to show you this those over there are rocket pods yes those are rocket pods you can see each one is going to contain a shitload of rockets so if you are on the receiving end of the ship and for some unknown reason you ended up in front of the ship you are going to have a very bad day because you are going to have a world of hurt released on your ass <laughs> and then obviously the spotlights at the bottom over here with the gatling guns mounted underneath so this thing this is not something you want to get into a tussle with you will nine times out of ten most probably lose if you decide on this morning you want to fuck with this free with this corvette you are nine times out of ten is probably going to lose but it also comes down to the pilot itself so we've had a look at the outside of the ship i mean the silhouette is absolutely stunning it is beautiful and that cannot be denied i really really do like it but now let's go inside and let's have a look at what the creator was able to do on the inner workings of the ship so we'll drop down the gravity will obviously catch us we'll close off that door and we'll open this as we go inwards so it cheats us to this nice little entrance as we walk over one of the um, warp cells you can obviously see that this is going to go quite a bit darker now because i don't think there are actually lights within this ship but i like the atmosphere that it gives you could almost turn this into a horror game if you really wanted to <laughs> Okay, so now that we're in here, I am, however, going to turn on my um, headlights, my headlights, my flashlights, because I can't actually see much. There's not much that I can actually see. So this, I'm guessing, is where the piloting is done. So it's not... I don't think that's it. That can't be it. Nope, it's not it. I was very confused there for a moment. For a moment, I really thought that that was the entire inner workings of the ship, but I could not have been more mistaken. So no damage blocked, no damaged blocks found. That is a program that you can type into the programmable blocks where it will detect basically if there's any damaged blocks within the ship. Now the nice thing is he has also put in the information on the display for us over here stating that the reactors are running at I think 1.8% or they're only being used up 1.8%. I'm not exactly 100% sure. And 0% of the cargo being used. Okay, so it is. It's 1.8% is currently being used. So currently, as the ship stands, being very idle, it is not exactly using any of the um, reactor's resources. So we jump into the seats over here and let's have a look. Now we obviously get the third-person view of the ship. We are obviously going to turn on those thrusters. I still love the sound the engines make when they obviously speed when they obviously power up you can see that obviously our thrusters are busy working overtime we've got that massive blue flame coming out the back over here and if we obviously slow it down we'll have a look at the two thrusters we've got in the front over here slowing the ship down now it doesn't actually look like we've got a lot of stopping power if we actually bring up our heads up display we can see in the bottom left hand corner that our meters per second is dropping slowly a lot slower than obviously it would speed up but i'm not really going to be worrying about slowing down especially if i'm in a fighting situation if i'm in the midst of battle slowing down is not going to be on my mind <laughs> my mind is going to be maneuverability getting in and out doing damage and basically being the victor at the end of all of this so we're going to jump out of that again and we're going to have a look on the inside over here now i do believe the um view itself just needs to adjust quickly obviously let the shaders kick in make it nice and dark and then we'll turn on our headlights, our flashlights. Come on, why do I keep saying headlights? So, which we're going to go first, left or right? Oh, let's have, actually have a look. So, down this way, we've got the medical and cryogenic room, as long as well as the hangar. Through to the left, we've got the gravity generators and an exit. And to the right, we've also got the gravity generators and the exit. So, I do believe to the left over here, it's mirrored to what we just had. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's mirrored right to left making use of all those beautiful blocks making use of these catwalks so that it looks like you are actually inside a fully functioning corvette very nice very beautiful so let's start off let's go upstairs first i like <laughs> you are here lovely i like the little display he's got over here telling us where we are and where we need to go and where everything is proportionate from us now i keep getting pulled forward like that because each room is pressurized and me obviously opening up each door is depressurizing that room 
Now, I do believe this is the bridge. I think it's the bridge. It could be the bridge. I don't think it's the bridge. <laughs> that is the hangar over there. We'll obviously get to that. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on. Now, I do think, however, that this... Yep, that is the bridge. I do believe that this is the bridge that we were having a look at. Very, very nice. I do like it. I do like the design that it's got this elevated seat basically so the pilot sits over there out of the way from any distractions nobody's gonna mess with the pilot the pilot's got view on basically targeting on the right hand side wait let's actually do this let's climb into the chair but let's change the view so we've got targeting on the right hand side and um, all important information to the left hand side of us the speed that we're going our acceleration our stopping distance our altitude the dampeners jump drive what percentage they are at especially if they charge and you're waiting for that to be fully charged you can jump out of whatever situation you are in i mean all the information or the most important information is to the right and to the left and possibly the display in the front showing us where there is damage to our vessel very very nice and then obviously to the back over here we've got the two seats possibly for somebody to sit there and work at this could possibly be a situation for example like your engineers or your chief engineers would be sitting on those chairs monitoring everything looking down on the operations in the hangar itself and the atmosphere inside here is a bit dark for my liking but obviously that can be very simply changed just by slapping one or two lights into this place itself but i do like the idea it is very nice it is very atmospheric does give you that <laughs> horror horror genre vibe it could actually be something very interesting to possibly explore and possibly turn space engineers into a horror game. <laughs> That'll be nice. But yeah, so we've got this overlooking the hangar over there. We've got this um, hangar with all the bridge section over here. And what I like is it is in the center of the ship below a lot of armor. You are not very easily going to get inside here and take out the um, pilot or the bridge itself. It's not so greatly exposed <laughs> on top of the ship like uh, I will not name names. Some Star Wars ships are. But very nicely tucked in the center so that if it comes down to wartime and should it come down to a battle that you get involved in, you know that the inner workings of the most important room in the ship is protected. And then obviously we've got our programmable blocks to the right and to the left here. And once again making use of a block in its not intended purpose. <laughs> a staircase on its side but it adds to that overall aesthetic appeal of the inside of the ship. Very very nice. Very impressed. And then obviously a little um, walkway through underneath the uh, um, upper section. So you don't have to run all the way around every single time you want to get somewhere. Now that is obviously mirrored right and left. So that's where that door goes. So let's go downstairs. Let's go have a look at this awesome awesome hangar but before we do that let's actually have a look what's to our left and to our right over here now i think yep that is our med bay now anybody that has been paying attention to all of my previous episodes know that a med bay is the most important thing in the game if you don't have one of these and you die well shame you gotta start over if you don't have a med bay please put one in as soon as you possibly can this is where you respawn this is where you heal yourself this is where you can customize and change out your suits if you've got mods for other suits this is where you change them so please have one of these on your ship and this can obviously serve as a med bear as well now because this is a vanilla creation he's taken basically these um these hallways placed them on their side so that it doubles up and kind of looks like a bed very very nice now i do believe that that is mirrored on this side as well no it's not this is a cryo room so obviously for those long hauls we're going into um interplanetary sorry not interplanetary we're going interstellar we're going thousands of parsecs or quite a couple of parsecs uh, across space and it's going to take a while especially if we don't have a jump drive or our jump drive can't go that far we can Bunk down here, going to cryo sleep for the entire journey and then be woken up possibly by an automated ai system Waking us up just before we get to our destination so that we can obviously get everything ready for our arrival. Very, very nice, very um, nice place to have um, inside the ship. So let's have a look. Once again, it's going to depressurize because I do believe I opened up everything like an absolute idiot. But yeah, now we are through to the hangar bay. Not a very big hangar bay. So you are not going to fit a massive ship in here. 
but you will still get a small little transport or one or two very small fighters. Possibly, I don't know if you guys know the um, Battlestar Galactica series, possibly those little Delta fighters. Maybe if you were able to create something that is as small as those are, you'd be able to fit two inside you. But most ships that I've seen, you are not going to fit inside the storage, inside this hangar bay. But if created nicely, if um, built very compactly and for a simple purpose of a fighter, meaning no irrelevant blocks on the fighter itself simply a cockpit thrusters and a machine gun possibly or a one rocket pod you might be able to fit two in here however i don't know where you're going to land them because it looks like they are only there's only this section to land on <laughs> so possibly back to back on those two sections very tiny but not impossible a shitload of connectors within this room so if you did have something small it could possibly connect up in here dump off everything we need if we look above us we can see there are some more oxygen um, storage containers as well as four spotlights that will obviously rain down in here and basically blind anybody that is in here so what is this that is the hangar door that is the spotlights let's turn the spotlights on there we go so um yeah that's very bright so you're not going to have to worry about having uh, not having enough light in here. That'll do the job very, very nicely. And I love that glow that it gives of that overall atmosphere. I know I'm using that word a lot, but it gives it a very beautiful atmosphere within this hangar. Hell, I'd rather sleep in this hangar than the crew quarters. Wait, I haven't seen the crew quarters yet. I might eat my words when I say that. But while we're doing that, let's quickly do this. We've got the hangar doors over here. So the lights will start flashing red, indicating that those doors are about to open up. And I do believe right before they open up. Come on. There we go. Right before they open up, it looks absolutely stunning. The timing blocks are done damn well. Giving you a decent warning. The lights are flashing, stating, listen here. These doors are about to open. If you're not in here or you're not um, wearing a, a helmet and you do not have oxygen in your suit, please get the hell out of there or put on a helmet very, very quickly. Or you will get sucked out into space and die. But, very, very nice. And I also like how it is hidden. Very, very nice. Okay, so we are going to come back inside here. We are actually going to close off these doors. And one thing I wanted to have a look. If you actually have a look at the outside, there are also these flashing red lights on the outside. So you are aware, both inside and outside, that these hanging doors are about to either open or close. Very, very nice. Let's quickly wait for those to close. My timing would possibly be a little bit shorter it's taking a very long time for those to actually close wait why didn't they close was that a different button what lights on what detection oh close hanging doors never mind there we go now they're closing i pressed the wrong button so wasn't the creator's fault it was my fault i'm an idiot <laughs> i thought we were aware of that now so let's close this door behind us while those obviously close we'll leave the spotlights on there's no need oh damn there's no need for them to be off right now so, at the back over here, we can see we have got two small reactors. Actually, if we have a look in there at the back, we have got another small reaction. So, we can see four tiny reactors. Now, I do believe there are a lot more powering the ship, but I think those are the only two that are visible. We've then got this passage going straight up. So, no staircases, no nothing, just simply making use of your jetpack, going straight up, opening that door, and we go straight up into the next section. Now, this, if I'm not mistaken... Let's close those doors. This brings us up onto the other side of that hangar bay. As you can see, we were on the glass um, off section on that side. I do believe that is where the bridge was itself. Now we're looking down on the hangar bay from this side. And this is possibly just another observation deck. Another area where you can look down, observe, make sure that everybody's working safely and correctly. Make sure that everything is running as smooth as it possibly can. Now, I don't actually think we can go back. I do actually think that brings to an end the tour of the interior part of the ship. But I love the space management. And obviously, protected once again inside interior turrets should anybody find their way up here. Because from here, you can control the hangars. You can turn those spotlights on and off. You can open up the uh, switch on, the auto-open detection. So using a sensor block, if you get close enough, it'll open. Or if you're about to leave, it'll open it up for you and then close it behind you once you leave. And then obviously close the hangar doors if you're doing it manually. So a very, very nice design. So we're obviously going to make our way all the way out again. We're not going to bother closing that door. We're just going to drop down, move on onto the next section, waste all the oxygen that we've possibly got stored in that section over there. And I think we're going to open up these doors again. I do love the way these doors open. Just simply, once again, those red lights going on. 
flashing nicely and then just those beautiful um, air tight hanger doors opening up to the world outside now just imagine you've got those opening up you've got a, a couple of fighters coming in for me you've been able to build a small little delta fighter that fits inside here and as soon as those doors open up out you go you're off to protect your ship obviously the gatling turrets all of the defenses are doing their job shooting and taking down as much as they possibly can i mean you can get into a serious fight with this creation and i think at the end of the day still end up the victor it's got a lot of firepower a lot of heavy armor blocks the most important parts to the ship are buried well within and it's not going to be an easy fight but yeah, that was the GSI Incord Class Assault Corvette. Once again, created by Xtvs V. No mods whatsoever. The link for this creation will be in the description below. You guys can go download it yourself. Possibly put it on a 1v1 fight. <laughs> See how everything goes. See if it's as badass as what it actually seems. But that is all the time I've got for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. And I do go hope you guys agree with the new schedule that I've got for this. That is simply so that we can obviously make sure that more content comes out a lot faster. And there's not a week's wait between videos. But if you guys, did, if you guys did enjoy that video, by all means, leave a like, share that love, show some love and subscribe. And I will see all you beautiful people in my next video. But obviously until then, cheers.